Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. Well, I've got an interesting young lady to introduce you to tonight. Like, I mean, really very interesting young lady. So I ran into her at a dinner in uh, Mississauga a couple of years ago. And at that time, she was uh, in a 17-year-long uh, relationship that she'll tell us a little bit about that uh, I don't think uh, was... Um, was very positive for her uh, for her life, uh, and she uh, left that relationship, and she went on um, on really a a journey of exploration, both self exploration as well as exploration of of life and meaning and 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 sexuality and 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 stuff. And she wants to tell us about it because she's developed a course uh, about uh, her learnings during that, and uh, and it's a safe platform that she's developed to talk about sex. And uh, it's something that she's passionate about. And I, I'm looking forward to hearing about it, frankly. It'll be kind of interesting. So um, please welcome to our show, uh, Nyla Aladdin, uh, who uh, is coming to us from Arizona tonight. She used to be in, uh, in, uh, in Mississauga, uh, but uh, the, she then left uh, her relationship in Mississauga and she left Mississauga and she left uh, to go to uh, British Columbia. And she spent um, a year and lived in several different cities across British Columbia, learned a lot, took a bunch of courses and, uh, and found herself and found her calling and found what she wants to talk to us about. Nala. Hi. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Fantastic. So, so before we sort of talk about how we got to where you are, tell us where you are. What, what is this course that you've got? Absolutely. I'd be love, love. Thank you for the introduction. It was very lovely, first of all. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. So the course basically is a, is a base of seven sessions. And I take people, individuals, whether they are male or female, that are in high stress positions. So I've, I've realized that people take a lot of time to take care of their health, whether it's eating better or going to the gym or sleeping better, just so that they could have a better a work-life balance and be more proactive at work, more productive, more creative. And while doing my little research and being on the journey that I have gone, uh, I have studied a lot of communities. So being in British Columbia, and I've, I've been there since December till August, so shy of a year, I lived in over seven different uh, communities. And I went and explored with the people, spoke to the people, and find out what was the pressing issues. Uh, one of the things that I found that people neglected a lot was the sexuality. And uh, Ryan, we come from this two uh, dual duality where on one side, where the background that I grew up and the culture that I am from, sex is a taboo. We don't talk about it. We, we just never even mention it. And then on the other side, on the Western side, you have an over-sexualization of sex. So I was very curious and that topic really was of interest to me, how to bring it back to the center. How can uh, people, individuals, whether they are from different generations, have a conversation that is respectful and educational about sex and nobody nobody bats an eye and they go to the next topic, just like we'll be talking about how to eat better or how to sleep better. So all of my research and all of the different uh, people that I've been talking to, I realized that that was one missing aspect of their uh, productive uh, or work-life balance uh, hygiene, if you may. And people tend to not realize that sex is such an important aspect of it. First of all, as a female, um, my hormones are greatly affected by my sexuality. And uh, we'll talk more about that. So I kind of like did this whole course where I bring people into reconnecting with their sexuality. And as a result, they reconnect with their creativity and they recreate, uh, reconnect with uh, productivity. They are more productive, they're happier, they have more energy and they're happier at work. Happy People that have sex are just happier. <laughs> so, uh, and there's a lot of scientific uh, backing of that. Lots of research. Has there's scientific backing that people that have more sex are happier. Is that true? Yes. It is. You can actually Google it. There's multiple articles. That I think I might. <laughs> it's just hormonal, right? Like if we remove the aspect of pleasure from it on a completely biological and chemical aspect, you're releasing the right hormones that we are seeking through pills, we are seeking through exercise, uh, but you can just have it by reconnecting with yourself. Well, this sounds like a fascinating course. And so if people are interested in this course, how do they sign up? Is there a website? Uh, so the website has been built currently. I got a lot of overwhelming um, just response from people that have been taking it. I've been testing it and, and, and giving it out over the last few months. And it's just been really overwhelming in terms of like people just love it. Like they, uh, they've been getting a lot of success from it. So the you website do this is uh, one on one or via the Internet or in a group or what? 
100% one-on-one with full uh, privacy and confidentiality because every single person that comes to me has a different um, different chapter, different level that they're working on to reconnect with themselves. So the seven course is basically, the seven sessions is basically a base of that. And to answer your question, you can get in touch with me through uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, email. I will provide all of that as well as Instagram. Uh, so the website is being built right now and we'll have all of that up real soon. Awesome. So we're talking tonight uh, with Nala uh, Aladin. Is that correct? Nala Aladin? Yeah. Naila Aladin. Naila right. I apologize for the pronunciation. Right. Um, who, um, who's gone through this fascinating journey. And we're going to take a break and come back. And I'm going to ask her to tell us a little bit about this journey. Because she went through a 17-year, very unsatisfactory uh, um, relationship uh, that really motivated her to then go out and find out who she was all about. And through that process, uh, she's not only found out about who she's about, but she's found her passion in that uh, what she wants to tell us all uh, about that will help us lead happier and healthier lives. Stay with us. We're going to come back with uh, Nailala in just a minute. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour in Saga 960. We're having, I think, an interesting con- conversation. It could be a really interesting conversation with uh, Nyla Aladin, who uh, is someone I met um, just in, uh, in social circles in uh, Mississauga uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we ended up uh, sitting at the same table at, a, at an event together. Uh, and at that point in time, she was in an unhappy relationship uh, um, that uh, a 17 year long a relationship that turned out uh, badly. Um, and since then, she has um, gone through really a journal- journey journey of self-discovery. And, uh, and through that, one of the things that she's discovered, it appears, is something about, uh, about coming to terms with our sexuality and being more comfortable with, uh, with sex. And she's now developed a seven, no, a five uh, um, program, uh, series program um, that she wants to teach people about. Um, so why don't we delve back and, uh, and Nala, tell us, uh, where were you when we first met? Tell us about that. Sure, I was in Mississauga, and I think it was in 2018. Uh, I had no social life, pretty much. I was just a stay-at-home mom going just to pick up my kid, come back. And I was very dissatisfied with life in general because I felt that I didn't have a purpose. I felt that uh, just, you know, just having this beautiful life in Mississauga, which it was the appearance from the outside, um, it wasn't doing much for me because I I didn't have any purpose. Uh, So long story short, after we had met that time, um, after a year or so after that, I decided to leave that relationship, which at that point in my life, I thought that my life was going to be over if I left that relationship. And uh, it was uh, it was very abusive physically, emotionally, culturally. And that's not to say that um, something uh, culturally abusive. Uh, it was just things that were being taken out of proportion from a culture and being imposed on on, on me as a human being. So um, the person that I was involved with was also coming from his own trauma and that's how he could uh, perceive the world. And I needed to make a change because me being there and just being a victim was not going to cut it. I needed to use this to empower myself and empower others that no matter what you're experiencing, you, there's always another way. There's always a, 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 another way of doing things and there's always hope and faith. And was, uh, a great was, example of that. It was physically abusive as well. I'm so sorry to hear that. Very, very physically abusive, yes. Did yes. Were, were police involved at all? No, I never did that because I, the way that I've used the judicial system is I never felt that sending somebody like that into that uh, rabbit hole would give us or any, any, anybody from society uh, anything positive from it. And uh, as a side note, I would like to say that even here, being here, I've been working with a really high caliber lawyer from ASU University uh, to give my input on social justice issues like, uh, like what we're talking about. So that's a passion of mine. So no, I never called the cops because I never thought that rehabilitation through the, the current judicial system is how you tackle issues like that. You need, it, they are deeper issues that needs to be looked at in a different way. Okay. Um, well, I'm sorry that uh, that that uh, that you experienced that, um, but you decided to leave, and uh, and so you left and went to to BC. Is that correct? Yeah. So uh, for a few months after I left, I had to find myself, uh, understand, because you have to imagine, I from the time that I was uh, somebody that was 17, 18, I had been attached to another individual. So I didn't even know who I was. I had to re- relearn who I was. I had to go back and 
uh, understand human behavior. Who are the people in my life? Who do I trust? How do I conduct myself in social situation? Because I was alone for the first time in so long. So that took a few years, a few months, sorry. And then by uh, December of last year, just after we had a few of those lockdowns, uh, I decided, I actually decided in July that by December, I wanted to make a shift and move to the West Coast. Because I have been in Canada at that point for almost half of my life. And I've never been to British Columbia. I've never, other than um, Quebec, I never actually went outside of the province. And like we have such a beautiful, um, a beautiful country to discover. So I made my way down there and I explored it quite a bit because my desire was to really explore human behavior and see how I can make a difference, find out my purpose, understand myself. And I did that. I allowed myself for that time to reconnect. So how did that happen? Um, beautifully, I, I just packed, we, we had a bunch of, so it was four of us. Uh, one of my friends, he got a whiteboard when I said that I wanted to go. Um, he literally wrote down a whole plan, including the budget of how much the gas was going to be and how long we were going to be there. It was beautiful. So we, we were able to go down and uh, two of us continued the journey. Two of us went their different ways. Uh, however, we went to so many different communities and we got to study uh, by living within those communities and interacting and meeting the people and going to different events with them, really be part of that community. What was actually happening? What are the issues that we're all facing? And one of the things that we saw a first hand was that people are really passionate about causes. So you meet a group of people and they're really, really passionate about um, the trees and saving them in British Columbia. There's the whole old growth that is being uh, challenged right now for, so there's so many people there that are doing a beautiful job there. And then you have people that are thinking about the ocean and plastic or the environment in different ways. And what's happening is that everybody's thinking that their cause is better or they need more help on one side to the other. And what we've, we've been collecting is data of how we can come up uh, with solutions for everything and uh, support everybody and hold everybody's hand and say, hey, every, we're all important. Everything is important. So, so those are some of the projects that I'm, I'm here to assist in, in Arizona. And it, uh, it's beautiful because on the other side, I get to work one on one with people and help them reconnect with their sexuality, which is as important because everything is actually connected, right? And so this trip, how did this connect up with finding something out about your sexuality? So when I got to BC, uh, I'm very social. I'm always meeting people, making friends. I met this uh, ex-professor of the University of Alberta through a Facebook uh, Facebook group uh, that was just a Facebook group that was called Welcome to Vancouver, I think, or New to Vancouver. And we connected and he became my friend. So through uh, meeting him and um, learning from him, I discovered that what he had done after he had left academia is that he went and studied different modalities of gynecology world around the world. And I thought that was very interesting being that, first of all, he was a, a man that was teaching women about their own body and about their sexuality. So I decided to record um, some uh, shows, like a show, a TV show with him. And I was extremely uncomfortable at the time because I was still in my ex very new out of that relationship. Uh, sex was such a huge taboo. There were so many cultural aspects of me being on screen and talking about sex that I had to take into consideration. It was not a conversation that I was comfortable having. However, I, I, I wanted to bring this and bring that kind of vulnerability so much to the public that I actually went for it and I did it because I wanted to showcase that this is really important conversation that we are not having. And first, my, my uh, lenses were to teach women but then I also realized that men and women need this information and this is as important for both genders. So then I completely switched it to having this information available to everybody because it's important. And what did this uh, ex-professor have to say? So much. So, for example, one of the things that we've learned is that... Um, uh, female ejaculation, we don't talk about it, and a lot of females have never experienced it, or they, they, they don't even know if they are, their body is ca capable of this. It's a flush of the lymphatic drainage. So men have more sweat glands, for example, and when they are exercising or something is going on, their toxin is being processed through their sweat. Whereas women, we sweat less. So where does all of this toxin go through? Well, one of the ways is it goes into our bladder through our lymphatic drainage, and having a big burst of of uh, ejaculate is actually really healthy for a woman. 
we don't we don't hear about that. No one tells us about these things. So these were like really eye opening and shocking for me. Uh, another thing is uh, that uh, there's different hormones and different chemicals that gets released through uh, different uh, orgasms. So he has a really good map of uh, the vulva and the vagina, and he actually shows that the G spot is, is, is not, it's just one of many spots, and that an orgasm is basically um, a stimulation of one spot that, get, that secretes something. And each time something gets secreted, it's a different, like if you actually analyze them, they're all different substances, they're different uh, texture, thickness, color, liquids, and they all have a different hormones so by actually releasing those hormones in a female body you you're um, balancing that person's hormone whether they are doing it themselves or they have a partner it's really important because they are balancing their hormones and they're keeping them themselves healthy those are conversations that we do not hear about at all no we certainly don't uh, yeah. okay so um so this is interesting so was he teaching you uh, how to do it or just uh, if it happened, uh, what uh, what hormones were released? The second one. So we actually recorded a lot of those. We actually did an a interview style where it was me and him sitting and me asking him those questions. Uh, we haven't decided quite yet what we are going to do with that because I was really awkward asking him all of those questions. So it comes as a really interestingly funny. Uh, what we might do, and this is something that might, I, I'm really interested in the future, is re-recording all of the talks with him and then doing snapshots of how my progression of how this uh, topic was uncomfortable for me and I really have that out there for the viewers. So it's something in the work still. But yeah, it was uh, me sitting down with him and having a whole bunch of questions and him answering them. Okay, so so this um, professor motivated you to understand a lot more about um, about pleasure and about orgasm. I take it. Sure, and and it's also linked to trauma. So one of the aspects that's why I got into that even more was that I understood that females tend to keep a lot of their traumas in their pelvic area. So a lot of the issues that we have um, as um, as a consequence of going through years of trauma and not processing it is issues in those areas of our body. So coming from 17 years of trauma, I was very interested in healing and having those really powerful uh, conversation with him allowed me to really understand my body and where I was holding my trauma and how I was able to get rid of them and how I can have a more positive uh, life, not just sexual life, but a positive life through releasing of those traumas. So um, a lot of that came from that motivation of understanding myself, because even within trauma, there's different aspects of it, different ages and how it affects your body, whether it's a physical um, uh, trauma, uh, it's affecting it physically or it's affecting it emotionally. There's various levels of it. So how did you get rid of your trauma? It's still a process. It's not something that you get rid of like as a fly like this. Uh, it's really understanding your body. So that's how I created those seven sessions of those course. It's bringing it back to um, bringing. So one of the things that I want to mention is when anybody, whether it's a man or a female, they want to take the course. The one, um, I guess, uh, one thing that commitment that I ask of them is for those first seven session, they are not having sex with, not, with another human being. That doesn't mean that they are not. They can't have it after. Of course they're going to have it after but for that first seven session what I'm doing is re-teaching them who they are and how to reconnect with themselves how to identify um, things in their bodies that they've never understood and they never knew was there so really taking them on a beautiful journey of self uh, exploration first and then allowing them to reintroduce outside energies within themselves so that was one aspect of what I did and then uh, really co connecting to myself really understanding where the different traumas came from really understanding that this, the the only one sex organ that we all have is the brain and nothing else so it, it's been a lot of self-learning uh and experimenting as well as uh, helping other people so it's always three ways right when you're when you're on that journey but i thought that one of the most beautiful things of sex is sharing it with uh with another person and and that one of the most important sex organs is the heart and, uh, and that that connection, that 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 sense of love that one has, um, if you're just doing it on your own, aren't you missing that most important part? Absolutely. And that's that's just to reconnect people to themselves. So it's just seven session for the first seven session. It's crafted in a way where I'm teaching them uh 
first we examine who they are and then we delve into that and then I teach them how to self-pleasure in a way that they've never done it before. I add different aspects of it. I add the breath work. I add different visualization and it's a it's reconnecting to that. So once they are they are healed in that sense or they have re-disconnected that aspect of themselves, when they're going out to share it with another human, it's even that more amazing. It's even that better. And then they can actually share what they've learned with that other person because a lot of the people that are coming and learning, um, they might or they might not have a, a sexual partner, right? So once it, the ones that do, they absolutely love having uh, re and have this like a little kid going back to their partner. And now they have this whole new sexual experience that they never had before. And a lot of times uh, I, I ended up having my, uh, my client's partners as my next client because this is such a positive change in their partners. And they want to they wanna learn that too because the sex is that much better after. It's just what it is. We're chatting tonight with uh, uh, Nyla. Uh, I, pro I pro apologize. What's the last name again? Adlin? Aladdin. Aladdin. Na Nyla Adlin about um, her journey and uh, her journey of self-discovery and her journey of how critically important um, sex and sexuality are to her and to, to us and a program that she's developed uh, educating us all. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back more uh, in just a minute. Stay with us, uh, everybody. Welcome back to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Second and Sixty. We're having uh, a slightly embarrassing but uh, but interesting uh, conversation uh, tonight with uh, uh, Nyla Aladdin um, about her journey of discovery of herself, of her sexuality, of sex. Um, it would disappear numerous different spots within uh, the the body that uh, are pleasurable. Uh, that uh, that that she encourages us to find out on our own first of all before we share it with another person and a seven step or seven uh, uh, program uh, um, uh, that she's put together, seven step uh, program that she's put together to educate us uh, that uh, she's offering to people. So this is really quite fascinating, fascinating um, because I think it is a topic, uh, uh, Nyla, that uh, people don't uh, talk about a lot and find uncomfortable. So let's, <laughs> let's be uncomfortable a bit and talk about it uh, some more. Um, so you say that um, female ejaculation is good for you um how does a female ejaculate so it's so it's the, I, I can go into the the graphics right now you, your show would not be aired however this is something that i can teach uh a hundred percent it's just different stimulation of different spots and when the right spot is is stimulated in the right way it happens and there's quite a bit of literature about it there's different techniques there is one that I particularly like to share with uh, viewers because no one has ever heard of it. It's called the Kunyaza, and I can definitely share how to, to write that after, after the episode is aired. Uh, it is a technique from West Rwanda and actually wrote an article that was published about it um, and printed. So basically, it's a technique that a queen had asked um, one of the people that worked for her when her, the king was away to when she, she, she asked him to pleasure her. He got uh, performance anxiety and then he didn't know what to do. So he used his penis to tap on her clitoris. And all of a sudden, like there was like this huge amount of water. That's that's how they called it in the legend that came out. And that there's so many books about it. There's, there's so much literature about it. There's uh, documentaries that are being made currently uh, on that topic. Uh, and it is a technique from West Randa. So there's a lot of uh, cultural uh, practices around the world that we have no idea of that is unlocking different aspects of our body, whether we are male or female. And uh, something that uh, a lot of people really enjoy this conversation when I talk to them about this, there is, so uh, an orgasm is basically an, uh, an, a gland in your body that's being stimulated enough to have a release. So you can have orgasms throughout, all out. You can have full body orgasms. Uh, it's, it's beautiful once you actually understand and connect with it. There is an orgasm that a person can receive that starts from the throat down to the belly button, and it doesn't really touch any uh, genitals. And it's by giving a deep throating 
by, by basically having a deep throating. So once you understand how to open up those different channels in your throat and you breathe through it, whether you're male or female, that's actually giving a deep throating, you experience this really cool orgasm. And what that actually does is it releases some really cool um, hormones in this area and it's really healthy for your breast. So there's, there's so much to learn. <laughs> Okay. Um, you said that um, uh, you mentioned the G spot and, uh, and you said there's lots of other spots. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So there's the G spot, there's the K spot, there's a U spot, and there's an A spot. And those are all inside of the vagina. Okay. Tell us where. <laughs> <laughs> that it would be really hard to go through the details of that on, on, on here without a diagram. However, again, uh, that's something that we talk about in the course that I teach us in details for sure. Yeah. Okay. And, you, and, and I guess what you're contending is that, uh, that a lot of people neglect all these different spots because they didn't ever even hear about them or explored them. Exactly. Yes, uh, absolutely. Okay. And, and, you know, there's controversy that the G spot doesn't even exist. I know. Yeah. And there's so many other ones. And, um, and so one of the really cool thing is that the professor, the ex professor, he, he's still a PhD holder. So he left academia to pursue other um, interests. However, he still has his academic background. So he has put it out there. If there was any um, labs or any companies that would want to sponsor him or hire him to do research on that, he has he has years and years of research in terms of physical research and uh, other people that has worked with him that has come to the same conclusion. So we'd love to bring that on so we can actually have some data about it, which is really important. So he's an academic studying um, sexuality? Pretty much, yes. Okay, and he, he passed on all these learnings to you? He did, yeah. I feel very lucky about that. He's a really close friend of mine. Okay, so let's talk about these seven steps. Uh, tell us about what, what you do in the different one, the, the different uh, classes. Yeah, so when I sat down and I crafted them, I looked at everybody that I have helped and how uh, basically the the process of it was. It was really interesting that a lot of people had a lot of... Um, um, shame and guilt towards self-pleasure. So the first aspect of the course is to reconnect people with themselves first and really understand who they are and what, what makes them them on, a every different, on every level, not just on sexuality. Just the dealing with the sexual part and reconnecting people to their sexuality will as a whole help them with other things in their life. So this is not a sex course so that people are just benefiting it in their sexual life. Uh, it's gonna help them in a lot of other ways. So the first thing is to identify where they are in that journey and where we need to take them. So that's the first couple of courses. Each one of the courses also have some, a little bit of a homework after, which involve uh, really listening to your body, connecting to your body and uh, in those lines. So then once the person gets uh, a little bit more acquainted, acquainted with themselves again, then we take them into a journey. I take them into a journey of self-pleasure and reconnecting with that and understanding how to do it. With, and the other thing that I do ask within those seven, uh, seven sessions is to not use, utilize porn. And there's reasons for that because you are stimulating your brain with other aspect uh, that is not required and other releases, uh, hormonal releases are happening that is not required in that moment. What we want is we want you to connect back within yourself and really learn uh, the different points in your body, as well as how that gets connected to your energy, how that gets connected to your productivity and your creativity. So teaching them other aspects of sexuality as well as, as well as emotions. So once we go through those different steps, then we, we teach people, I teach people about uh, trauma. I teach people about boundaries. I teach people about one of the big aspects of the course is sexual transmutation of energy. And a lot of Sorry, people- What's that? Sexual transmutation of energy? Yes. Uh, Brian, I'll ask you this. Have you read uh, Think and Grow Rich? Yes. The book? Okay. There is, I think it's chapter 11 of that book. That is the name of the chapter, sexual transmutation. So a lot of people have read this book over 13, 14 times. I personally know a lot of my friends that that's their, that's their Bible. They, they live by that book. However, whenever I ask any one of them about chapter 11 or uh, the sex chapter, they're like, yeah, we read it, but we don't understand why that is. Well, that's one of the big aspects that I teach to people, how to transfer your sexual energy into how to materialize it. So if you 
you think about sexual energy, if you think about sex, it's the most powerful of creative energy because through sex, you can create another human being. So how do you utilize the energy that you're producing, which people have been utilizing for thousands and thousands of uh, uh, years uh, in the East uh, and other aspects, which just like uh, think and grow rich, uh, Napoleon Hill understood that. How do you utilize that to have more energy, to have more productivity, and above all, to have more creativity? So that's one of the big, big aspects of the course where I teach people, first of all, to understand that, to break it down to what that actually means in a logical manner, to experience it within themselves before they can go and experience it with others. Because once they tap into the, that within themselves, it's, it's beautiful. Now they understand it on a different level. So when they're experiencing it with another person, they know what, what's actually happening. So yeah, so we, I break this down and I really teach them about it and how to utilize it uh, for their benefits. And that's one of my probably favorite things to teach to people in the course. Okay, so tell me, how do you utilize it for your benefit? Uh, you will have to take the course to know that, Ryan. It's a, it's a whole journey of understanding sex and energy and energy on its own. So um, energy can never be lost. So it's always going from a point to another, point A to B. There's always a transfer of energy. So the course, what it teaches you is how to utilize that energy as you're having an orgasm, as you're, you, as you're going through sex, how you can utilize that energy and transfer it into creativity. And it's a beautiful thing when you, you understand it, that Taoism have been doing it, uh, ancient Vedic has been doing it. So there's many cultures that have been promoting and doing it as well as uh, um, books about it, so much books about it. So that's breaking it down into a more practical way of understanding it in a in a new world in an in English, basically. Fascinating. And and any anything else in these uh, seven steps? Uh, yes. Yeah, so basically, I also teach people how to reconnect with a sexual partner after, what to tell them, how to preserve that beautiful new version of themselves that they have uh, just recreated or um, reconnected with, how to increase that, what are the, what are the next step. Uh, I also teach them about boundaries, how to talk to, to partners about things that they would like or not like, and how to remove the taboo of having those conversations, how to make it more accessible. So the, and then after those after the seven sessions, I also have other different types of session available if somebody wants to have a little bit more information about something specific. So it might be oral sex, or it might be uh, deep throating, like we spoke about, or female ejaculation. So the, a little bit more detail about those. I have one-on-one uh, -on -one courses for those. They're just a one-time course, so it's not something that the person would need to take over and over, unless they want to talk about trauma and they want a little bit more. Um, you know, support in that aspect. Uh, the idea is for them to take this information and to go and explore and maybe connect with me in a, in a few months and just let me know how it's going. And I love those stories. The idea is not to perpetually have people taking the course over and over. It's just, you come, you learn, you enjoy it, you really put it to practice and you go and, 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 and share it with the world, basically. Fascinating that you've gone through this journey and, uh, and discovered yourself and discovered uh, this this part of yourself that you want to share with the rest of the world. Uh, has your, um, I presume it was a husband, has your ex-husband um, realized what you're up to and what does he think? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. That's a good question. I have no idea. And you don't care, I guess. Not at all. Not at all. I wish him all the best. He needs uh -huh. a lot of healing. Yeah. He what? He needs a lot of healing, just like all of us. So happy healing to him. Okay. Um, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people would probably say that uh, sex is really almost all about penetration and you haven't talked about that at all. No, and it's, it's part of it and it's not part of it either. So sex could be just two people sitting down and connecting in such a manner that they are having orgasms after another just by looking into each other's eyes. That's also sex. And another aspect of sex is penetrative sex, absolutely. And it's a beautiful thing. They're both as important in my opinion. And then I guess the other thing is a lot of people would, uh, from a female standpoint, only focus on the clitoris. And, and you're suggesting that there's a lot of other things to focus on. Absolutely, yes. 
Yes. And going away from the clitoris is beautiful because the clitoris is really powerful in terms of the amount of nerve endings that it has. However, having um, orgasm through the clitoris actually releases dopamine in your body. However, having a, an orgasm internally releases oxytocin. So depending on what you want to achieve, we're already getting shots of dopamine from our phone, uh, checking out our social media. Um, you want to you kind of balance out your hormones. And if that's what you desire, internal orgasms are more powerful in that aspect. And so please explain the difference between an internal orgasm and a clitoral orgasm. So a, a, a clitoral orgasm would be stimulating solely the clitoris and the person experiencing an orgasm through that organ. Uh, the internal one would be going through the vagina and stimulating the points that are inside and having an orgasm release without touching the clitoris, basically. Without touching the clitoris at all? Yes. That's okay. a real thing. Seems like most of this focus is on the female. female. No, not at all. That's just the line that we've been talking. However, male, uh, same thing. The course is, I, I have a lot of male clients actually, and the course teaches them how to go back and reconnect with themselves the same way as the female and re reconnects them with aspect of their body that they didn't know and they just, you know, connecting really well with all of those areas. And then the self-pleasure as well, teaching them new, new rules of self-pleasure, no porn, how to have breath work while you're having self-pleasure, what, what are the different aspect of it, and really, really teaching them to reconnect with that, an aspect, maybe not reconnect, maybe they never experience anything like that, how to edge, why edging is important, what, what does that do to your, uh, to your creativity, how to utilize your sexual energy to have more uh, product, productivity at work, so there's different aspects of it okay, okay, hold it. how do i use the sexual energy to have more productivity at work yes that's the main point of the course because by taking care of the, your sexuality you actually produce more energy so how to harness the sexual energy within yourself is basically what the course is teaching you okay how do you do it you have to take the course brian oh, gosh. <laughs> and you 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 said that uh, let me See if I can remember it. Uh, the the uh, the 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 G spot, the K, the A, and the one other one. There were four of them. The there was the U. The U. The, the K A K A U and G. Is there a comparable multiple numbers for letters for men? No, unfortunately. However, the men, uh, the the uh, anus area and the back area of the men has more uh, nerve ending than female, and there's way more pleasurable access point that way if the male is comfortable. So we talk about that. We we remove the stigmas and all of the uh, shame and and all of the different biases that people have about that area of your body. At the end of the day, it's just an area in your body, and whether you like it or not, there's a lot of beautiful nerve ending there, and there's a lot of potentiality for not just a pleasure but also also healing because um so the way that trauma is kept into the body the men also have trauma in that area and a lot of their trauma is in the back area end and understanding how that works really allow for a lot of release of trauma from that area in the male body as well uh, a lot of uh, really healthy excretion in those areas allow for a healthy prostate prostate health, which is neglected. So going through the back area and the specific massages that can be done excretes the right hormones for that that is neglected. We don't talk about that. So absolutely, there's a lot of information for either gender. We're chatting with uh, Nala Adelin uh, tonight about uh, her journey and about her uh, course on uh, sexuality. We're going to take a break for some uh, final messages, and then we're going to come back with some concluding comments in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Second and Sixty. We're chatting tonight with uh, Nala Adelin, who is from Mauritius. Uh, she is from Mississauga. Uh, I met her um, uh, a couple of years ago, I guess about five, six years ago at a, a dinner. And she uh, found me on uh, social media and my radio show and started following me and reached out and says, I've got a message that I want to get out to the world uh, about uh, her journey um, um, through trauma, out of trauma, um, into self-discovery and in that self-discovery, um, 
her discovery of uh, sexuality and uh, and and now the development of a course, a, a seven stage course that she takes people through to get comfortable with their sexuality. And and uh, Nala, if people want to reach out and uh, and uh, access your course, how do they do that? Uh, mostly through LinkedIn. They can reach me at LinkedIn. I have a link there. There's my Instagram. There's my Facebook. Uh, yeah, just hit me up, send me a message, connect with me, and I can walk you through what it is. Really, the program is for people to get to know themselves first, to understand what sexual energy is, which is not just about sex. It's about creativity. It's about productivity. So what is sexual energy and how you can utilize that to have a better life, to have a better sleep, to have a better a mood? People are happier when they have sex, but also how you can bring that into your business, how to be more creative, how to have a better uh, relationship relationship with your coworkers, it's, it's all connected. So really teaching people how to manage that and uh, yeah, connect with me through any one of those platforms. And uh, how much does the course cost? So the course right now, it's costing uh, $200 for one or $1,200 for all the seven. Okay. And um, do you think people have a big change in their life if they take the course? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. A hundred percent. Are you a different person today? Uh, oh yeah. I'm a hundred percent. I like saying this. I'm an 180, not 360 because 360 brings you back to the same spot. Right. So yes, I'm definitely changed. And you're obviously happier. I am way happier. And, and what do you think um, would have happened to your life if you had known this halfway through your marriage? Anything? Oh, definitely. I would have Yes, I would not have been there. Uh, uh, understanding my power, understanding, reconnecting with oneself is so powerful because when you're in a situation of trauma, you, for survival purposes, you have to get out of who you are. You just survive. You're just a shell of yourself. So just by virtue of reconnecting me to myself, it would have been so powerful, 100%. Sounds um, really quite uh, quite significant. Um, and, you, and you say that a lot of... Uh, the cultural practices, um, a lot of the, the discovery um, is from the East. I understand that, you know, in India, there's actually a temple uh, to, uh, to sex and, uh, and a lot of the, the different positions. And we all know, or not, not all know, but we've all heard about the Kuma Satra. Is that where some of this learning comes from? A little bit, part of it. However, this is as old as, uh, as people and sexual energy has been something that this is as i mentioned at the beginning this is the only type of energy that people most people have felt somebody that has experienced an orgasm has felt how that rises in your body and the physical aspect of how you feel is basically energy being shifted into your body so this is a really good introduction for people that say oh i don't feel energy i don't know what that is yeah i know there's energy you have energy. We are we are radio transmitters. We basically are a panel, an electric panel. So you actually really feel your energy, which is whether it's sexual or not, when you're having sex. So that energy is what um, from generation to generation in India, as you've mentioned in the Kama Sutra, but also in every other uh, other Eastern philosophy, they've been harnessing that and they've been utilizing that for different purposes. And that's why in a lot of religion, sex is so much taboo or they, they, they speak to it in different formats. The priests, they're not having sex or the nuns. And that's Again, because there's a, a way, a method of how to harness that sexual energy. It's not being practiced by that, uh, that group of people uh, currently. However, the intention when it all started was, okay, if I'm not going to have sex, that's also what the Buddha was preaching uh, by the monks. So if I'm not having sex, I'm going to harness that sexual energy to, to utilize it for other purposes. So that's what I'm talking about. And I'm teaching people, okay, so you are going to have sex because I think it's beautiful and it's the most beautiful part of positive creative energy that there is. How do you utilize it to your benefit, to be more productive, to be more creative, to be happier, you know, things like that. Um, supposedly a lot of females have difficulty achieving orgasm. Why is that given everything you've just been describing? It's, it's trauma. It's the trauma that they hit. So uh, um, a female tend to hold physical trauma in their pelvic area. And that's it. A lot. And it's also you in your head a lot, because if somebody went through a lot of trauma, everything is linked. And in those moments, they, 
there's multiple reasons, but the main reason is trauma and uh, being stuck in some in one's brain. So a lot of the a lot of the first half of the course uh, has a lot of emphasis on reconnecting females or males to that aspect of themselves and to really discover that and to understand where is that trauma coming from? Is it coming from a childhood? Is it coming from a sexual trauma? Is it coming from um, an emotional trauma or physical trauma? Is it because you don't walk properly? I know females that because of the how their physical body is and where they put more emphasis in their body, their hips are too tight. That's also constraining the, the, the right um, muscle to allow for an orgasm. So it's never one answer for, for all of this. It's just because it's so taboo and people don't talk about it. We don't even have the opportunity of helping others with that. Madeline, Madeline, uh, Nala, Adeline, thank you so much for um, a stimulating, interesting, uh, provocative, uh, um, probably slightly taboo conversation. I really uh, found it interesting and enjoyable. Really appreciate you reaching out to me. You're welcome. Thank you, Brian. And well, I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable slightly. <laughs> that's our show for tonight. Thank you uh, so much uh, for Nala to uh, for joining us and and uh, and being so open uh, with us uh, tonight and. Uh, um, maybe I'll take your course. Stay with yeah, us. Yeah. Uh, actually, don't stay with us. We're over for tonight. That's uh, that's our show for tonight. Um, I was a little bit, uh, I think I had a hot flash or something like that there from uh, from the conversation. Good night, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>